So on the bench today then I've got the uh, Turbo Tenor by uh, Danettes and uh, I've actually wanted one of these for a while just uh, out of curiosity just to see how powerful they actually are but I was always unwilling to actually pay the uh, price tag that these sell for. They sell anywhere in the region of around uh, £70 to £90 and I was just unwilling to actually uh, pay that kind of money for this. So what I'm going to do in this video is take a uh, look at this and uh, first off before I do anything else to it I'm going to actually uh, see how powerful it actually is by comparing it to some uh, cheaper antennas that you can purchase off eBay and uh, then I'm actually going to take a closer look especially here at the main driven element and the claims that they make that uh, this is actually a specially tuned ballon that uh, really makes this antenna perform uh, much better than uh, anybody else's Yagi antenna. So I'm not actually disputing that this will uh, pick up considerably more Wi-Fi access points than uh, your, your built-in antenna on your laptop for instance but uh, I just don't think that uh, this is actually worth the uh, price tag that they actually asked for this and I'm pretty sure that uh, in this video I can make something a, uh, for a lot cheaper and uh, it will have the same uh, kind of performance outcome that uh, this little uh, turbo tenor actually does. So first of all then I'm going to hook it up and uh, we'll have a look at uh, some of the uh, wireless access points that it actually picks up and uh, we'll uh, compare that to a uh, dirt cheap Yagi antenna that I've also picked up off eBay for £4.50 so we'll give that a shot first and see uh, how it actually performs so let's do a quick scan then and see how many access points we can actually pick up so already considerably more than uh, the uh, internal Wi-Fi card on my laptop can pick up scroll down 33 access points 34 so a few of these are actually dead but there's quite a few that are uh, a uh, green color which we could actually connect to if we wanted to so not bad it does uh, do its job but uh, as I say I'm just wanting to find out whether it is actually worth the uh, price tag that uh, the sellers actually ask for this antenna. So second test then comparing it to the uh, cheap Chinese Yagi off eBay and uh, it did rain in between so I've just waited for that to stop but uh, I don't think it's going to affect the test too much. The uh, cheap Chinese one has picked up 25 access points and a few of those are dead but um, it's not doing too bad to say uh, it's significantly cheaper than the uh, turbo tenor but uh, yeah it's not picking up as many so hats off to the turbo tenor it uh, does uh, pick up a few more access points compared to the cheap one so this is what I actually got in the box now I didn't uh, buy this new I actually won this on an eBay auction for £32 which even then was slightly more than uh, what I really wanted to pay but uh, there was quite a few bidders so you can see how popular these uh, seem to be and it has actually been uh, featured on the gadget show which is a uh, television show here in the UK there was uh, a segment there where they did a little bit of Wi-Fi scanning using this from one of the bridges in London and picked up some uh, wireless networks so again I'm not saying that this will not work much better than uh, say your internal uh, antenna in your laptop I'm just concerned that uh, you know you can do if you've got uh, 90 pounds to spend on one of these you can do a lot better with uh, that 90 pounds and probably have some uh, left over as well so you get uh, in the box uh, quite a lengthy USB cable it's quite thick and uh, it does uh, feel like a uh, quality cable now in the kit as well you get this uh, little tripod which again feels a uh, quality tripod. Uh, these are the tripods that I give away with my Biquad Yagis and uh, it's uh, a better quality and feel than that one and it also twists on this axis as well so that's really useful when you want to uh, add an antenna to a tripod like this because they can be a little bit front heavy when you're trying to position it in the right position so a nice little tripod 
So the antenna itself has uh, a weighty feel to it, but uh, I think a lot of that weight is coming from this uh, driven element, which uh, is uh, metal. It uh, certainly looks like quality. And the company itself, Danettes, who uh, produced this antenna, if you have a look on their eBay page, uh, certainly uh, when viewing it in the UK anyway, they have a uh, UK address here in England, but uh, when you actually dig a little bit deeper, they're actually uh, based in Hong Kong. Now there's a large reseller network attached to this uh, antenna. So, you know, some of the adverts on eBay aren't actually by Danettes, but uh, they're by uh, third party resellers who probably buy these slightly cheaper direct for the company and actually sell them on. I'm not really sure how that works, or it may even be drop shipping where, uh, you know, they uh, take an order and then they actually contact Danettes to actually send the antenna out to the uh, winning bidder. I don't know, but uh, just looking at the antenna itself, it does look like a uh, quality product. And it does have tuned by Turbo Tenor on the top here. So, uh, you know, it must be good. So the label on the back here has uh, a uh, rating of 35 dBm. I, uh, you know, you can take that with a pinch of salt. And uh, it's also called this particular model with this particular Wi-Fi card because they do have several different Wi-Fi cards with these kits. But this one's called the 007 GTI. So it's a hot hatch with a license to kill. And on their website, on the information there, they uh, claim that the ballon for this particular antenna is under this heat shrink tube in here. So I'm not sure what is actually going on there. Um, I don't particularly like putting ballons on this kind of driven element where it's a closed loop. Yes, it uh, does have a slightly high SWR, but it's only up there with uh, the Cantenna. And uh, putting a ballon on um, does exhibit a uh, small amount of loss as well. So any gains by tuning this down to a lower SWR that are gained are uh, kind of negated with the uh, ballon itself. So when it's a closed loop like this, I don't actually bother using one. I would only use one when it's actually a uh, dipole antenna for the driven elements. I'll show you one of those in a minute. So the uh, ballon isn't inside here. It is uh, apparently under here so I don't know I've never seen a ballon like that before so it'll be interesting to remove this uh, bit of heat shrink tube in here just to see what's actually underneath and to actually mount the antenna to the uh, tripod you've got a uh, screw nut here which actually goes all the way through and uh, it's fastened on there with a Phillips head screw so you know it's machined out it's a pretty nice way of actually doing it so not too bad at all so as for the Wi-Fi card itself, it's held on with some Velcro on there, but uh, it's also covered with this heat shrink tubing. Now I've put this model number that's on the side here into uh, Google and I can't find any uh, information about that at all because it's actually got HP on the end here. It takes me to a few HP uh, forums where they are talking about uh, completely different Wi-Fi cards. So I'm gonna crack that open and see what's uh, actually going off under the hood and see what chipset it is. But um, it, they have uh, different Wi-Fi cards with these antennas. Each one claiming is better than the previous, but uh, my guess would be that uh, it's whatever is the particular cheapest one they can get in volume at the uh, Shanzing market at that particular time. And it's connected here with a uh, little SMA connector with a short piece of coax going into the main driven element there. So you can actually remove this and you can actually connect something like a uh, alpha card onto there to actually uh, run it as well. So I've actually removed the main driven element from the Yagi there and they're just held in place by these long Phillips screws. And uh, we've got another sticker under here that says uh, tuned by turbo tenor so i'm going to take that off in a moment but uh, one other thing that uh, i'm a little bit uh, unsure about is this uh, main driven element really needs to be completely isolated from the boom it doesn't want to be uh, grounded to any of the uh, parasitic elements or the 
back reflecting element so I'm not sure if there's going to be another piece of wire running through the center of uh, this actual uh, metal tube here that's uh, probably the only way I can think of actually doing it because this is actually making contact with the uh, main boom itself so I'm a little bit unsure but um, I'm pretty sure there's not a lot going underneath this sticker you just got two solder points with the uh, coax going off in two different directions so I removed that sticker and it was a uh, warranty sticker, it's left uh, an imprint around here so I can't put it back on but it's just filled with uh, hot snot so I'm going to try and actually dig some of that out just so we can actually confirm that we've just got the two coax cables going off in the two directions here. So I've got the uh, hot snot removed so we can actually see inside there now and uh, it's not what I thought it was going to be at all. You've got the coax coming in here and you've got the centre core of that coax actually soldered directly onto another piece that seems to go off in this direction but uh, I can't see anything coming back in the other direction. There's definitely not another piece soldered on there anywhere. So I've removed that heat shrink tubing and underneath we seem to have this uh, rubber tube and uh, I'm going to just pull that to one side so we can see what's actually going on here. So what we've got then is the outer braid as I've said is soldered on here and then uh, the outer braid stripped away and the inner core is actually left in its uh, isolating sleeve going all the way up around there and then it's soldered on to the second half of the driven element coming back on itself around here so I've never seen anything like that before in a uh, Yagi design but uh, as I said I'm not an expert on Yagi's there's so much to actually read about Yagi antennas that uh, I don't know I've never seen that uh, particular design before so don't get me wrong it must work I mean uh, we did do a quick scan before actually uh, looking at this antenna and it did pick up something like 35 access points so it's definitely uh, doing the business but uh, it's uh, very unusual I've never seen it before so just to show you what I mean by a dipole element on a Yagi this is a cheap Chinese uh, branded Yagi that you can get off eBay again pretty cheap and this is a dipole setup you've got uh, one element there and one element here so it's that classic dipole uh, setup if you actually google uh, fundamentals on dipoles you tend to see drawings of a dipole actually uh, uh, drawn like this kind of setup here and this is the ball and this uh, little length of uh, the uh, signal wire here actually going off and just terminating nowhere that is the ballon to actually balance this down to uh, the uh, correct SWR for the uh, 2.4 gigahertz now if you use a closed loop uh, method like I tend to use you uh, don't particularly need this ballon because you know it, it does um, bring the SWR down slightly but it also has loss in this coax here so one negates the other that's why I don't tend to bother using a ballon I always tend to use the uh, closed loop method so I've got the little Wi-Fi card opened up here and there's not a lot of information on there they've actually uh, got some sandpaper and removed the information off this main chip here but uh, on the board here it's a uh, RT3070 and that's actually made by Raillink and you can actually pick these up off eBay I've uh, found one with a uh, seller here in the UK actually selling them for eight pounds so if uh, you actually searched and uh, found uh, possibly a Chinese seller you could probably get these a lot cheaper so again eight pound for the uh, USB card so there's uh, a lot of markup on this antenna the, the, the price they actually charge for it is uh, like I said it's between 70 and 90 pounds and in the information as well regardless of the claims that they make about the Yagi they actually say that this is uh, 2200 milliwatts and it's not so you know you can take that with a pinch of salt Rowlink actually uh, states it's actually 400 milliwatts so it's not as powerful as the uh, turbo tenor guys are making out and again as I uh, said earlier they're probably just getting the Wi-Fi cards that the, uh, they can find the cheapest 
purchased in bulk at the uh, Shanxi market there with the SMA connectors already sold in place so you know they just uh, put one of these in the box with their little Yagi antenna, a uh, driver disc and a lengthy USB cord and uh, charging £90 for it. So to conclude then is the Turbo Tanner worth the price tag of uh, somewhere between £70 and £90? Nowhere near. I mean at the end of the day they've sold thousands of these worldwide. Now with that kind of buying power the uh, you know parts for this antenna I would expect the uh, parts to come in at no more than around £15 so you can see the kind of markup they're actually making. If you purchase this Yagi antenna in bulk even if it is uh, significantly better quality than the normal Yagi's you see off eBay because you're buying so many you get it significantly cheaper. This adapter you can get this adapter for £8 and that's here in the UK if you sourced it directly from China you'd get that even cheaper. You've got your SMA connector here which is again you know if you buy them in bulk but let's say it's worth 50 pence so you know it's 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 not a lot of money in this at all they're making a huge markup on this yes the uh, little tripod here is uh, slightly better quality and uh, you know I, I actually like the tripod but again if you're buying these in bulk you know you're going to get them cheap enough so they're making a huge markup on this and uh, you know people do write good reviews about this but at the end of the day if uh, you're only used to the antenna in your laptop and you suddenly plug this in yes you're going to be impressed but you can do a lot more with uh, you know less money uh, putting your own little kit together and uh, have plenty of money left over to spend on something else so I was going to wrap the video up there but uh, while I was waiting for my neighbour to finish cutting his grass I decided to put my own turbo Tanner together and uh, this one is uh, tuned by me and uh, it's a cardboard tube from some kitchen roll and I'm using the same wireless adapter that came with the uh, turbo tenner and uh, I'm also I've got a special blue tap balloon there so I'm expecting some really good things from this uh, antenna so just for fun then same setup as before I've got my uh, tuned turbo tanner that I uh, made and I honestly did make this just while my uh, neighbour was cutting his front lawn so it didn't take too long at all so let's do a little scan and see if we can get around uh, 35 access points like the uh, Turbo Tanner did so it's slowly creeping up, we're in the 20s anyway so that's not too bad so we're still adding a few more oh we're into 30 so definitely we're into 30, 33 access points, 35 access points. So my highly tuned uh, Turbo Tanner with its cardboard tube and its uh, blue tap ballon there has uh, definitely, you know, it's pulled up quite a few. In, in fact, it's pulled up 39 access points. So yeah, not too bad at all. So I hope you enjoyed that little video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. I'm sure there's a few uh, Turbo Tanner resellers that uh, won't like this video. But uh, any comments, drop them below and uh, hopefully you'll uh, join me on the next one.